Hey, welcome back everybody. Today, the lazy but determined method of constructing a heat exchanger in order to heat your domestic water with the less domesticated water found in the outdoor wood stove. Here I attempt to use only the items that I have around and to put as little thought and effort into the project as possible. So of course that didn't work, but hey, if you ever listen to that voice in your head that said, you know, there's no way this is going to be that easy, then you'd never find out why. Okay, so the outer shell of this thing needs to hold water, but only at a pressure of one atmosphere, as this is an open system. Alright, this 50 caliber box will work fine. Okay, the next bit. We need to present a large surface area between the two different waters to exchange the heat between them. And I seem to have too many Escort heater cores. Alright, look, this thing fits right inside of that thing. Uh, sure, it's not rated for this pressure, but I'll, I'll just do a pressure test. Uh, don't you think there might be more to it than that? No, no, because I'm really lazy yet determined. Alright, this will be fine. I'll just mark some uh, holes here, and then I'll just center punch those and drill them out in two stages so they're the appropriate size to use the electrical punch here. And sure, at this point you might say, why don't you turn that box over and make wrenching that punch a thousand times easier? But let's not forget the original guidelines for the project. As little thought as possible. Alright. Without all the raggedness of a hole saw. Beautiful on both sides. And there's another one. And now after a welding process that we shall not speak of, I apply a little insurance silicone. As you can see, well, as you can three quarters of the way see, all of the fittings are on. And relatively watertight. Alright, I'll let that cure until morning and I'll give it a nice lazy coat of paint. And now for a rather fumy, smoky, and awkward soldering process, made even more difficult by the fact that I had to apply the thread sealant beforehand. Hopefully not to burn all the paint off. And nothing's melted off. We'll cut fire. Followed by another pressure test. It's sealed. Then I install some foam baffles to direct the furnace water through the fins of the heater core. Then I cut some strips of rubber roofing to go on top and bottom of the heater core to hold it tightly in the box without allowing metal to metal contact. Check the fit. Feels just fine. And there you have it. Piping hot water. Well, certainly piping anyway. I was able to eliminate this traditional circulator pump that I was using for the heating system. Replace it with one of these cute little DC ones. Going from drawing about 50 watts or so on low with this down to about 15 watts with this one. And that little pump does a great job of circulating all the water necessary from the wood furnace through this heat exchanger, creating the domestic hot water, and on to the radiators in the crawl space that heat the house. Of course, all this can be explained much better with a good professional drawing. And this setup provided plenty of domestic hot water for any sensible household. And I almost got away with it. But a couple days later, I could see that the pressure and temperature changes inherent in the system were going to cause more movement than this heater core could handle. There's why that was so audible. So I quickly developed a different plan for utilizing existing resources. I gathered up all of my small scraps of copper pipe from installing heat pumps that would be otherwise fairly useless and began bending them into a shape that would fit in the 50 caliber box. I made as many of these curvy pieces as I would be able to fit neatly into the box 
and plan to join them together at the top and bottom with short bits of half inch pipe. I then turn my attention toward making some fins to increase the surface area of this thing and help hold it in a uniform shape. After flattening the pipe, I ground the edges off in order to split it into two fins. I then laid out how all the tubes would line up and set to drilling out the fins. With the tubes held in position by the fins, I can now mark the top and bottom manifold for drilling. soldered anything this involved made entirely from scratch, but it turned out not to be that difficult. And once again, the pressure test is what it's all about. Let's see how I did. Ah, that tube's misshapen. A quick roundening later. Hold. I think it's holding. And now for another awkward installation. This will no doubt transfer plenty of heat. And it did, with the added benefit of not having any fins really close together to trap dirt and corrosion, especially in a situation like this with a rusty old steel homemade wood stove outside. Bleeding. The air out of the top. Lead. So this transfers plenty of heat and should last quite a long time and be very serviceable with the parts that I eventually chose. While this may not be the ideal solution for you and it took way too much work to arrive here, it's working quite well now and it's in a cool 50 caliber box. And by doing it twice we were able to learn so much more. Thanks for watching.